gets it. Oh, I'm the master. I'm sure he's going to come back. Be fine. No, no, no. My, my phone kills me. A woman's had a baby abducted, mate. Abducted? Abducted. It's a little baby, probably a toddler. Yeah, Laurie's an ex-lifeguard of 20 years and he come running into the tower really concerned that a lady just reported to him that her baby had been abducted by another lady. I made an announcement down here. Yeah. A group of guys suddenly churched up and said they're headed down towards the water's edge. This white woman and the baby. Apparently she was seen heading in the, in the direction of... She, she doesn't know the lady. She really. doesn't know the lady. Wow. Jim, should we get... Ring the police, definitely. There's such a big crowd, and to try and find someone amongst that crowd who had abducted a baby was just going to be so hard to deal with. Central to Terry. We had a lady who had her kidnapped from in front of the tower. I notified all the boys on the beach by the radio, but they were about to find out about their own emergency. Everything's just hit the roof. It's just panic stakes everywhere. They were calling it, and so Tom was saying, that they were going to hold it. The clubbies here at Bondi Flags are saying that the southern outpost has seen a shark. I can't believe we've got a shark. I mean, they've got the duck and the um, yellow boat out there, so I'm trying to confirm it. This couldn't come at a worse time. Look how many people are on the beach. We're trying to find a baby, and now we've got a shark in the mix. In the back of my mind, I know that I might have to set this shark alarm off, which is going to set this massive crowd into a frenzy, making the search even harder. This is unbelievable. Every single person at the beach would have been worried about this shark. You could tell they're all standing up, but the poor lady looking for a baby, that was the last thing on her mind. Oh, hang on, Lois. Lois. That's to Aaron Graham. Is that where she got the baby? See that in... Hang on, I might be able to save you the trip here. She, she's got the baby, baby she's got the baby found. I'm so relieved the baby's been found. Good I'm really intrigued to find out what happened. The baby was walking off and you just... Yeah, she just, yeah, she's just walking uh, after her father and I just saw her and I didn't want to let, oh, right. let her alone in the water. We've got one lady claiming that she's found a baby and then we've got another lady claiming that she's had a baby stolen. We're just sitting here and my husband's gone swimming with the, the, older, the older daughter and this young, the young girl was playing with the, the baby here. I looked around and I did see my and I just thought, oh my God, what's going on? The baby was following the father and sister down towards the water's edge. And I didn't know what to do because she was just away. And the backpacker girl thought the baby was lost and thought she was doing a good deed. <laughs> and then I just went after her and I said to her, we have to go back, we have to go back. And I didn't want to grab her like, we just don't know her. The mother's gone walking down the water's edge to be informed by a member of the public that a lady had picked the baby up and wandered off into the crowd. I just can't describe how I felt. A lot of things go through your mind in such circumstances. I don't really want to think about it. It was just a massive case of miscommunication. It was just one of those crazy days. All of a sudden, we were approached by a man from China, and uh, you could tell he was just very distressed. One hour ago, we just got to the here. Now we put everything here and uh, settle down. And uh, he went to the beach first. For a swim? Yeah, the first swim. So I can't see him. So we were able to establish that his son was 17 years of age. Uh, he was last seen. Uh, going for a swim. And did he come back? No, never. The last time you saw him, he was going for a swim. Yeah, I, I didn't know. I don't know if this may swim or not. Did he say he was going for a swim? Yeah, oh. I swim. Well, first and foremost, you, you communicate back with Central, so we just let them know that we, we have a missing person. 17-year-old uh, Asian male wearing blue underwear, last seen about an hour ago. Um, with the intent of going for a swim. Okay, okay Tommy, just we just got to get. Let's just get this last detailed description. Of the last spot they seen him was he entering the water? Was he on the shore? It's good. I just want you know to escalate it. When there's a missing person, there's a process of eliminations down here. So it's either water or land, and obviously it's escalated quite quickly if it's in the water. So he, he, he your last. 
communication with him was that he was going to go for a swim. Yeah, 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 yeah. Came back. yeah, 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 yeah. Lifeguards are disturbed by the information they've heard so far. How are we looking, Tommy? Cool. Uh, I'm just going over to have a chat with the wife. She's, uh, she's just sitting out here waiting. Um, largely unchanged, all these clothing's here. She seems pretty distraught now that I'm walking over to her. By that stage as well, the whole situation had become a little bit more dramatised because we'd located the mother. Hi. What's your name? My name is <laughs> We're just looking for him at the moment. I'm sure it'll be OK. I'm sure it'll be fine. No, no, no. My, my son, this man is going to His name's, his name's Fan, yeah? F-A-N? His yeah, name? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was almost as if she had to be cared for because she was starting to show a few signs and symptoms of potentially slipping into shock. I just need to get some... I want my son. I'm sure he's going to come back. The missing boy's father begins to fear the worst. Now I'm going to look at my own face. I'm I'm sure he'll come back. Oh. Back to the centre, mate. I might take old mate for a rove along the shore. He just said, tower and back. Hey, and just while you got that vehicle, turn around, just do a megaphone announcement down the beach to, uh, just to see, maybe get the dad to do it so then he, you notice his voice. Yeah. <laughs> With every passing minute, concerns for the boy only grow greater. It's hit the hour mark. You know, the last footsteps were seen entering the water. First point of contact is the police. Hello, can, hello there. It's Harry from the lifeguards down at Bondi. How are you going? Yeah, good. We've got a reported missed Asian boy down at the southern end of Bondi. So at this stage, we're, we're still in a search and rescue mode, whereas I'm getting the police, I'm contacting the police. I'll have jet skis down on the shoreline, lifeguards are going out, it'll be a search and rescue phase and looking for this person. Lifeguards scan the water for any sign of the boy. They're not the most dangerous conditions we've ever had, but they're certainly not the safest. As the search time approaches 90 minutes, lifeguards scour the middle of the beach, 500 metres from where the boy went missing. Then, finally, a breakthrough. I saw it. I saw it. I saw it. I saw it. We found him. He's, he's with your husband. Thanks, guys. My son come back. Yeah, he come back. <laughs> He's OK. <laughs> she went from, you know, almost complete panic to just elation. Thank you very much. Oh, <laughs> thank you very much. You're welcome. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no, it's a bit scary. <laughs> I come back. My son come back. Yeah, he's with you. Your, he's with your husband now. Oh, yeah. oh, thank you very much. That's okay. Hello. You worry your mother's sick. <laughs> I think you took 10 years off her life then. <laughs> Maybe 20. <laughs> All right, guys. Yeah. OK. Enjoy yeah. your day. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Quarter past six in the evening. Um, we're getting ready to start packing the beach up. And we get a report that a, a uh, young boy's gone missing. The mother of the missing boy reveals her son is 14 years old. Mate, we are looking for a kid. The report that I got was that uh, he'd been missing for 30 minutes. So no real heavy alarm bells ringing for me at this point. Yeah, he's just wandered off. But then, Mouse receives disturbing new information. Hey, Corey and Luke. It actually got back to me that the kid had actually been missing for three hours. And um, as soon as I heard that, that was like a real alarm bell for me. That got me worried straight away. And she called the police. Statistically, teenage boys, notorious risk takers, are far more likely to suffer injury or even death by misadventure. 
the first thing you think is, have I missed someone in the water? Have we distributed lifeguards across the beach evenly all day? You know, could something have been missed? Then, another emergency kicks off behind the tower in Bondi Pavilion. Baby in the summertime, that is where I'll be. Hi, mate. Lifeguards. And you think to yourself, it can't get any worse. And then Bondi just throws another surprise at you. Mate, I was just on the phone to the Ambos. I just got, had an unconscious patient here. So whereabouts, what's your location there? So while this kid's been missing for three hours and I'm really getting worried about him and this girl's dying in the toilets, someone comes to me with, a, with the classic dislocated shoulder up on the promenade. <laughs> As Mouse keeps one eye on swimmers in the water, he turns his attention back to the missing 14-year-old boy whose mother is becoming increasingly distressed. You just gotta find this kid. That's, 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 that's getting pretty pressing, though. The emotional effect that you get when a person goes missing, or especially a child, um, it's, a, it's a real dark, deep stomach feeling, like that feeling like something has really, really gone bad. It's nearly 7 p.m. Mouse is yet to resolve any of the three emergencies he's dealing with. We've got an unconscious woman in the bathroom. The boys are on. We've got a dislocated shoulder on the promenade. Back on the missing teenager, lifeguards launch the jet ski. So you're just going to go solo, of course? Yeah. Now. Just get in the water. Just get in the water. Get in the water. Get in the water. By the time we threw the ski in, it was 7 o'clock, which is our finish time, you know? And to throw the ski in at that time of day, at that hour, it really makes your stomach turn. It's just like, you know, something's not right. And then straight away, the door knocks again. Hey, um, we were just around the rock, so you just slipped and cut yourself quite badly. Yeah, is she still there? Where is she? Yeah, she's still there. By this time, it's about 10 past seven, so we all should have been at home 10 minutes ago. Let's see if I can get a hold of someone with the IRB. Lifeguards working at other beaches have heard the emergencies at Bondi over the radio. They arrive to back up Mouse. We were really struggling, we were really short-handed, and then out of nowhere, Gonzo and Jeffro have finished work at Tama, and they've turned up at Bondi to, to help the boys out, which is unreal. So I sent the Gons up to North Bondi to investigate this girl that was apparently out there covered in blood. So Corey's in the water with a jet ski in a search for a young boy alive, hopefully, you know, we don't know. If he was in the water and he has been in the water for three hours, you know, there's, there's not much hope. And then bang, we just get the call. Lifeguard, lifeguard, Bondi, over. My boat? We have found him. I don't know where he was, I think he was playing in the water or something. That's good. From all reports, the boy was found just playing on the shore in the, in the south corner. And like, I don't know what to make of that. Like, I just, I just knew that he uh, got back with his family and um, we could just get back with our families, you know?